Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Good morning. We have a special guest in the building. And welcome back, sister. How are you feeling this morning? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me again. No, Peace. Right. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, despite what we're going through, you know, we stay positive and keep it moving forward. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Say her name, Envy. Yeah. Kelly Bowman. Yes. Uh, Kelly. I was like, I make sure I say it right. Kelly. It's Kelly. Kelly Bowman. That's right. <laughs> and you are the daughter of Dr. CB. Now you are here. Uh, you're doing a Honduran experience on the seventh in Atlanta. Explain what that is. Okay. So while we've been going through quarantine, we had a lot of time to think about what we were going to offer our customers. So what I wanted to do is not offer just a store. I wanted to offer an experience. And so this experience is for our mental health. I know you can kind of understand that. Absolutely. Yes. And and what I think is important is not only am I giving you something for your inner body, I want you to have a feeling. And because I had such a great walk with my father and we can't get to Honduras, I decided to make a store that looks like Honduras. Mm. So it's an experience. It's for all to come out and visit and understand it's just for you. Man, what did your father think about uh, mental health and emotional well-being? That's, <laughs> that's something that we never, I've never heard spoken about when it comes to Dr. Sebi. Well, I think if you look back on some of his videos, you can tell that he's very passionate about the inside of mm-hmm. us controlling how we think. Mm-hmm. And that's the very important part that we don't put together all the time because what you put in your mouth can yes. help or, or hurt your decisions. You know, all of us sitting here right now have to understand this. We have a superpower And that's the ability to make choices. And the choices we make actually will tell us who we are and how we present ourselves for the day. And so for that reason, I think it's all tied in, Charlemagne, Mm -hmm. but I really want to believe in the best part of me that because he instilled these tools that I understand to my um, era and below and, and maybe above that it all ties in and it's all relative. So we got to put that forefront right now. Mental health is very important. That's right. And I'm sure, I'm sure you're getting a lot of calls about COVID-19 and what can people take and to be preventative or somebody who might have it and say, hey, you know, what can, you know, treat it. So what are you telling people? Well, what I'm telling people is whether you've had it or um, you, you're worried about getting it, uh, one of the things that Savy's Daughters we decided to do is really dig deep into what Savy taught me as a young girl. We have to have a high level of vitamin C. Mm -hmm. All of us are iron deficient. And the reason why is because we don't have enough natural forms of vitamin C. And so with the elderberry, he taught me how to make a natural NyQuil, you know, if lack of better words. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, we we tried to perfect it in a way that is for children, but also we have one for the adults. It's called Elderberry Plus for the adults and simply Elderberry for the children. And it's a natural expectorant. So removing that mucus from your lungs is important. As we see today, that our lungs are filled once we get COVID, that there are some things that happen that don't allow us to get the air we need. It's such a virus, and it's mutated, as we see. Mm. So we want to do the best we can to support the body in every way. How do you think that what you eat is related to mental health? Because I'm a strong believer that what you put in your body can affect your behavior, can affect how you react to things, and can affect all of that. I find that when I'm being all vegan, I have a much better attitude than I do if I'm I'm falling off. Are you vegan today? Yes. Then we're going to have a beautiful conversation. (laughs) So what I really believe is when I sit and watch people's natural behavior, I can see that I I, I was at a restaurant restaurant. pre-COVID, and this lady kept, I don't know why I was zeroing in on focusing on her, but she was eating ice. She ate ice before her meal. She ate ice after her meal. And the reason that was important, she was having a conversation with a friend she was with. She was very, you know, serious and passionate about what she was saying. But funny enough, I know mental health tells me and also practice tells me that she has a deficiency in iron. Mm. So when I see a woman eat ice and then she has pica, I know that we have a deficiency that you may not even know you have. Mm -hmm. Some people write us off as women and say, oh, you're very passionate about what you said. You're very, you know, this or very that, even young men. It's the fact that we don't know we're sick. Mm -hmm. So we all need to be kind to each other. We're all sick in some way and we don't even know it because Mm -hmm. of the lack of education about our diets. Yeah, Every time you come up here, we have so many people trying to find your information, what they can get. That's what's up. Can you tell them how? Because, I mean, I know they hit Charlemagne. I know they hit myself. I'm sure they hit ye. 
But people always want the supplements. They want things that are going to be better than the things the that's CMOS. out there. The CMOS. The mm-hmm. CMOS, whatever they can possibly get. Okay, well, you can reach me at sabiesdaughters.com, uh, my Instagram, sabiesdaughters, LLC. And these are places where you find that indigenous food list. Mm-hmm. Uh, you find me on Facebook and Twitter. You can find how to fix this indigenous food. On the Instagram, uh, I even went as far as preparing it in front of you. So you got a lot of information. And I, I just came out with my own water. I appreciate the water that you guys gave me. I tap into the uh, mountains around Atlanta. I have my own water line. It's full of minerals. Because I wanted to make sure we got what we needed. And it was asked by the people. So thank you for sharing that with me. I'm going to do my best to try to make my media a little bit more functionable. <laughs> and, they look at it? And, and how hard is it to, to get the, I don't want to say supplies, but the natural ingredients that you need to supply people, especially right now during COVID? How, how difficult is it? Envy, there's a war right now. We got to be honest with ourselves. When we go in a grocery store, what do you see? You see GMO versus uh, organic. organic. So yeah. you got a fight going already. So when we look at how hard it is for me to get out there and um, hustle up what we got as natural, well, COVID changed my game. And so while I've been on um, quarantine, I've had to find new ways of my hustle. One of the things that I find important about our Royal CMOS is that I'm, I know my divers. I want to get up and close to what I know. And so my father taught me, if you're going to tell the truth, be about the truth. Don't sit here and tell people lies for sure. money. Money don't benefit you. Mm -hmm. A successful person moves no matter how, if they have a dollar or $10 million in their pocket. So honesty is important. So my product is based behind that. I can't put it into my mouth if it's not the truth because I believe in walking in the truth. So it's it's been a little bit of a, a challenge to find natural things, but I've been able to hold on to what I have. I'm like a squirrel, my father used to tell me, because I save it for later. I'm always putting away for later because I don't know what the future holds. Tomorrow, we may not have, but today I will do the best I can. Now break down CMOS. You, you said you know the dive. is How mm-hmm. important is CMOS? Where does it come from? Why do you need it in your body? And why, like the last two or three years, everybody has been CMOS crazy? That's what's up. You know, Dr. Sabi was the architect of the sea moss movement. So this Irish moss that, that grows in the ocean uh, is available in some places, uh, island rather, warm areas. And so why it's important is because it carries 92 out of 102 minerals that you require. So why is that important today? When we look at that war that we just spoke about when it comes to our food, we realize that we have a lack of nutrition. So if we're not getting it from our food, where can we get it? Well, I say go as deep as you can. And this is our way of fortifying the body because we shouldn't be eating to just like food. Food was meant to be good for your body to heal it. So we got to know the difference between what we're calling food and what we consider food. Because right now, I really believe we've made processed food our God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all we know. And that's sad. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm going to keep talking. Mm -hmm. That's why the Honduran experience, Sabi's Daughters, is here to keep talking and engaging and educating because I, I make myself really uh, transparent online. I want you to go look it up. I want you to know what you're taking. Don't make my truth your own. Make your own truth your own. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's important. What are some steps you could tell somebody who is trying to make those efforts to have a more natural lifestyle? First thing I want to say is don't judge yourself, but have a plan. Don't let somebody conveniently think for you what your food is. Find out what true indigenous food really is. So have a plan at that. Look in your refrigerators and be honest about what you know. And we all know at this table what is not good for you. In the back of your mind, you go, yeah, I know I shouldn't have had it, but I just like it. Let's start off with honesty. So the first thing we want to do is think about your water intake. Think about food that really exists that that has high nutritional level. We have an indigenous food list on my site, so it gives you a little play about what are good foods to have. And this is a worldwide list because we have clients all over the world. And I appreciate it. So when my dad died, I had these clients, and I'm like, how do I live up to that uh, expectation? I can't. I can only do the best way I know how by the tools he gave me. So I've kind of you know, put a lot of front-loaded my website with information on how to start. I think fasting is a good way for me when I first started. Mm -hmm. I did a two-week fast where all I had was water and coconut water um, for two weeks, and it did change my whole entire taste buds as far as Mm -hmm. certain things that were processed. I didn't even desire it anymore. Right. You know what uh, fasting is about, and a lot of people don't know it, even a detox, it's where your body resets, and that allows you to have that chance to say, hey, all right, I'm going to offer you better. It gives you a clean slate and allow you to go forward. So when you want to start better, 
fasting is a good way of starting. And but then having the plan to know what you're going to eat, because if you still got that stuff in your refrigerator, there's right. going to be a problem. Charlamagne, if I really wanted to get to know you, I don't have to ask your parents. I don't have to ask these friends. I will go look in your refrigerator if you gave me a chance. <laughs> You'll be confused. Cause I will be. Because it's balanced, right? My fridge is empty right like now. That, I mean, because, you know, we got my, me, me and the wife got a bunch of kids or well, three kids. So we, we, we do stress healthiness and we do try to stress organic. But you might see some M&Ms in there, too. Uh, a piece of red velvet cake. Mm-hmm. So you will. And that's OK, because what I think about is this. And, and that happens in every uh, household. But what is predominantly the principle of your diet? Can we be excited about these celebrities of the garden? Mm. You know, I really appreciate that Mm. he gave me that start. And so even though you have that 10 percent, that's okay. But how are you fueling every day? Mm -hmm. I want to know who I'm talking to. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that's so important is that we look at the 90 percent of what we're doing. We've got to change that plate around so that 10 percent can be held by your body because you're eating to live. So it can take care of it. But when you switch that plate around, what you're saying is that nature has been violated and there be gas disease. Wow. How can I, people give up meat? Because that's one thing like with, red, with uh, red meat, with cold cuts, with all of those things. I find that people are so addicted to that. How are some ways that you can kind of wean yourself off? The best way I know is to tell the truth about things. You know, uh, they told me not to say it, but I'm going to say it anyway. Chicken is the devil. And the reason I say that, (laughs) (laughs) chicken is the devil. And the reason I talk about the chicken, he's a beautiful animal. But if you know about what these things and how uh, what they do to the body, the inflammation of it all, the gaining weight of it all, when we step away from him and you said that, you know, you restart, you start to lose weight, you start to feel better. So what I'm seeing in the world today is that when you start eating, uh, when you've had a habit of eating meat, it's going to take a little bit, but you got to have that mindset of a plan. If I'm going to take away this, what am I going to replace it with? And start small. Start for two days. Do three days. Some of us don't even know you had a salad for the day, and then afternoon you had some soup. You don't realize you had a vegan meal all day. Stop calling it a vegan meal or a style. Call it eating to live. That's why I love the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's book, How to, How to Eat to Live. Mm-hmm. He talks. He talks the same language. I wanted to ask you too. People like to say, um, you know, you can be vegan, and you'd be like, well, you're still killing plants, <laughs> which I don't understand. I don't, you know, that's what they. I'm like, plants grow back. You know, cows don't. <laughs> <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> Being plant based is, is is something that I talk about. Plant based means the majority of your diet. This is what you're eating. Again, we we put so many things in front of it and we confuse ourselves. One of the things that I want to say about that is when you eat from nature, it complements you. And that's what I want the people to know about Sabi's Daughters is this goal is to keep having these conversations. I've had 19 to 25 year olds call me because they're interested in the conversation. And it's very difficult to understand how vegan, uh, pescatarian, there's all these names. I'm just saying eat to live. Mm -hmm. I want to show you a way of trading your place uh, into an area where you feel comfortable, but you're also healthy. You won't die by default. Mm. How many of us have went to funerals where there has been some dying by default? Mm. We cry, but do we change? Mm. Now, let's talk Mm. about the the importance of sleeping. I realize when, when I usually get sick, it's because I'm I'm grinding and I don't get the necessarily necessary sleep that I need. And usually I got to take a break and sit my ass down. So t- talk to the people about the importance of making sure that they get that amount of sleep to make sure their body heals. Well, I want to put this in a way that young people understand. You know, when your battery dies on your phone, what do you do? Charge it. Recharge it. Okay. Why? Well, it won't work. You got to get back on Instagram. All right. Shut up. Yeah. Uh, right. But <laughs> what happens to the body when it doesn't recharge? Oh, see, there's a natural recharging. Where do you think they got it from? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have to recharge because we are not allowed that efficiency. We got to give our bodies time to re-up. So sleep is very important. Sleep deprivation, if you look up what happens to a person who has it, is not very calm, not able to take care of themselves. So now we're moving forward in a mental health problem. And this can be over years' time. As a nurse, I used to work night shift. I used to work late shifts and Slept in the daytime. I gained weight. Everything, your, my circadian rhythm was off. Everything changes. And we know this to be true. So sleep is very important. But what you eat, again, we'll go back to the principle. What you eat in a day and what time you stop eating 
controls your body, your body's involvement. So if you don't have sleep, don't expect peace. I've seen grumpy. I've been grumpy. What about you, yeah. Angel? Yeah. Listen, and that's when I do get sick because I don't get sick often. But it's, if I do feel under the weather, it's only because I didn't get enough sleep. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. I lose my voice. What about physical activity? You know, a lot of times we'll say, I'm so busy. I don't have time to work out. What do you say to people that, and how important is that to make sure that not only are you eating right, not only are you getting enough sleep, but you're also getting enough physical activity, especially during this pandemic where people weren't going out as much, not going to the gym, not going into the office. The release of endorphins happen very beautifully when you exercise, and this could be a 10-minute walk down the block. You know, I had to get creative. I started walking just in my neighborhood at night just to get it in if I couldn't go during the day. I think exercise... Now be good, you be running through that neighborhood. <laughs> Wait, what'd you say? <laughs> Nothing. Go ahead. I walked all around Brooklyn during this pandemic. I got to see my neighborhood in a way I've never seen it before because <laughs> I always drive. Thank you. But what's good is <laughs> most people have stairs or... They have something. You can walk around your house a little bit and, and get your, your, your circulation up. But it's very important to exercise. Who told you you needed to sit still? Because all of us have been in COVID. We've been in quarantine. Sitting still gains weight. Mm-hmm. Sitting still makes your mind go a certain place. So I don't think that uh, we were designed to sit still. I never thought that. Mm-hmm. My father, up until his death, walked. We walked for hours. I remember in Brooklyn on Ocean Avenue. I, I came here after, um, right after he was incarcerated and got out. We took the longest walk yeah. and we keep walking. He's done nothing but teach me how to walk. So when I got here, I decided I was going to take a walk. And I took a very, very, I took an hour long walk. Why? Because it gave me a chance to breathe. Mm-hmm. So exercise is very important. We were never meant to sit still. What do, you think, what do you think your father would, would think of how, so, uh, how these so-called medical experts have handled the COVID-19 pandemic? I like to spin that and say, do we think that Dr. Sabi was right? Do I think as a person, when I look at medical, um, when I look at the medical field at this point, I don't think any of us have answers at this point that are, are um, total facts. Mm-hmm. I think that a lot of our anxiety comes from the fact that we don't know. And right now we're living in critical times, hard to deal with. And we want answers. What do they know? I'm not sure. But what he would do, <laughs> he would be still preaching his message mm-hmm. every day. And I think that's what I thought at the beginning of the uh, pan, um, pandemic. The pandemic, that I would literally have to understand that what he would have done. I want to know that I'm doing the same thing in Kelly Bowman's way. Mm. But he he would have done. You know, I think he would have done the same thing that we're doing now with Sabi's daughters, is leaning in and engaging the conversation in our communities, engaging in serious conversations because this violation of health is going to continue. But why? When we know that our health is wealth, mm-hmm. like right now, it's gold. Right. So we all have to lean in with each one of us having a gift to give to each other mm-hmm. and not judge any, anybody because none of us really have the total answer but God. So you don't judge anyone, not even people who get the vaccine? I can't judge them. Mm-hmm. I can't ju- just like judging someone who was raised to eat pork all their life. Who mm-hmm. am I to judge? That's right. I don't leave that for me. Mm-hmm. I'm just here to support do you, so, find, mm-hmm. do you find that people are more interested in their uh, health and what they're eating now than they've ever been before? Oh, yes. I've had young people call me and they're very concerned about how they're eating and what they can do. Everybody wants to know what they can do. So here's the conversation again. Was Dr. Sabi right? Mm-hmm. Was he right? So that alkaline indigenous diet, is it necessary? Uh, the, the intracellular cleansing, is it necessary? I say yes. I say yes. I want to know that people understand that you won't get anywhere unless you start a journey. Mm -hmm. He was a self-made man on this journey first. So we all have got to participate in this journey together. This is a marriage. What you eat and what you do go hand in hand. So let's do our best. Do you think there's a holistic cure or preventive formula to protect people from COVID? Uh, The cure is in the education behind what we do together. I really want to believe that there is, there's nothing but natural. You know, when that 1987 case came about, and I'm, I'm in California, and I was pretty young at the time. And when I heard that he was arrested for saying that he cured AIDS, it, it made me laugh at one point. I'm, I'm a young child. And so have I always believed in natural methods? This is a man who was courageous enough to come before New York courts to say that natural methods are good. Natural methods heal. But he wasn't the first. He was just the most excited at his time, and he stood behind what he did. And I stand behind that. Mm-hmm. So, yes, I do believe it because I use that method. But funny enough, when you go to the doctor and you have high blood pressure, you have uh, 
diabetes, what's the first thing they do? Change your diet. Yep. Okay, so what are we talking about? Why do you change your diet if it don't work? Right. right. <laughs> and if it's natural and, and you say, well, I don't really want to do that. I just want to take these pills where you're saying God was wrong because this was here before any of us. Wow. Wow. Now, can we talk about the Honduran experience and how people can register and what are some of the things that we'll learn from coming to Atlanta? Oh, I love to think that I've created a place where everybody will come in and de-escalate in mental wellness and physical wellness. What you have a little bit of is I'm, I'm launching some new products for the grand opening and it's wellness popsicles. And we also have a uh, candy body butter and hair butter. I really love, but when you go in, you have the ability to have uh, master classes. Uh, what you'll enjoy also is tea with Kelly Bowman and staff. You have the ability to buy products. You have the ability to rent part of it. If you have something that's positive for the community, I have a lady who wants to bring uh, some children from her neighborhood to learn how to pot plants. But on walking in, it's a real serious de-escalation. I know y'all can't be there, but I'm gonna try to stream it live. But the goal is to be in the community and help. So what you'll get out of Sabie's Daughters is not only that experience, but I also have a exhibit for Dr. Sabie. A lot of people don't know how uh, Alfredo Bowman became Dr. Sabie. So from his daughter, Kelly, I decided to give a little peek under the page, something very intrusive. It came from a diary that I started uh, when I was about 11 years old. So I've used that to uh, kind of create what Honduras was to me and him and this exhibit is more information about this very man that was so important to the CMOS movement. Now, where, where, where is it going to be, and, and how can people get tickets? All right, so you can go to SaveTheseDaughters.com, and it's free. Mm -hmm. uh, so August 6th, from 12 to 3 in Atlanta, you'll be able to walk through and see the exhibit. So you can go to SaveTheseDaughters.com. You can um, call us up. Uh, the, the number is on, I think it's on Google, it's 678-519-7382. Give us a call, but, you know, get on, DM me. You know, there's a lot of information on there on my website and on my Instagram about how to come in and, you know, be a part of this. And, all. you know, you, you, you really want to RSVP and, and moving forward. Because of this pandemic, we allow for cleaning in between so many. And we want to make sure that we're being safe when we do it. Absolutely. Because I want everybody to know this is for you. This is for that kid who can't get to Honduras. This is for that person who needs some natural health. Uh, education. That's what it's for. Is it a limited activation or is it going to be in Atlanta permanently? It's permanent. Now, I'm going to have it. I want to know that I can, in the very near future, make it a moving exhibit. Mm -hmm. But right now, I can't do that. I'm doing as much as I can with the quarantine. Mm -hmm. Well, when mm -hmm. you're ready for Brooklyn, I'm down for that. That's what's up. That's okay. what's up. What about, what I about, already know where. <laughs> what about Nick Cannon's doc? Are you participating in that? Mm -hmm. um, or have you? Yeah, I was, I was interviewed. I, I was interviewed for that. When it's coming out, I, I don't know that. I don't know. I've been approached by a couple of people who want to do a documentary because they were expecting it by now. Mm -hmm. And um, my move forward, my path forward right now is set. My convictions about what I'm doing have been set for a while now. And I just want to offer the community what I can. But I did participate in it. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to seeing his spin on it. As a family, I think we want to know that he's doing something positive to give to the world about him. Mm -hmm. So... I'm eager to see that being finished myself. Absolutely. All right. Well, Kelly Bowman, we appreciate you for joining us. And tell them where to find you, Kelly. You can find me at SaveysDaughters.com, Instagram, SaveysDaughters, LLC. And you can find me running around in Atlanta at the Met, 675 Metropolitan Parkway, Atlanta, Georgia, 30310, producing just for you. All right. All right. Well, it's Kelly Bowman. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. 